So if you haven't already watched question five, it's probably best to start with that one. It says, consider the following reaction. A plot of one over x versus time gives a line with a slope of 3.61 times 10 to the three per molar second. So if we look here at the integrated second order rate law, it would tell us that one over, in this case, x at some t equals kt plus one over the concentration x initially. So if we look at this as y equals mx plus b, if we get a straight line here, when we graph one over t, or one over a concentration of x at some t for y, at time as the x variable, the slope of the line will equal to the rate constant for a second order reaction. So we learned two things here. We learned both the rate constant, okay, because that is equal to the slope. So for this one, what is the rate constant of the reaction? It is 3.61 times 10 to the minus three per molar second. But we also learned that it's a second order um, reaction. So it says, what is the rate constant expression um, for this um, reaction? So rate equals K concentration of X squared. Why squared? Because we know it's a second order reaction because we got a straight line when we graphed one over the concentration of X at some time versus time. All right, so we know it's second order. We also know there's no other reactant, right? So we only know that it's second order with respect to X, but X is the only reactant. So we know it's second order, order overall as well. It now says, what is the half-life of this reaction when the initial concentration of um, is 0 0.250 molar? So the T1 half for second order reactions is dependent on the, first, uh, the initial concentration. So it's one over K concentration of X initially. So for a first order reaction, the um, the half-life is not dependent on the initial concentration, but for a second order reaction, it is. So in this case, we just found K, so T one half equals one over K, which is 3.61 times 10 to the minus three per molar second, times the initial concentration, which is 0 0.250 molar, given in the problem. And when we do that math, we find to four significant figures, it's 1110 seconds is the half-life of this reaction. All right, so the, the question says, if the reaction starts with the concentration of X of 0.35 molar, what is the concentration of X after 295 seconds. So if you've already watched A through C, you saw that we came up with the se uh, second order integrated rate law. We found um, K. So this is basically what we need to use. So the integrated uh, second order rate law, I'm just going to write it down here, is one over the concentration of X at some T is equal to KT plus one over the concentration of X initially. All right. K we have, all right, and what we're looking for is the concentration of X after 295 seconds. Said another way, this is our variable. So one over the concentration of X at some T is equal to K, which is the slope of the line, 3.61 times 10 to the minus three per molar second, times T, and the T is 295 seconds, plus one over the initial concentration of um, X, which is 0 0.350 molar. And I apologize, I may have said A here instead of X. Um, it's just this particular one happens to be X as the reactant, okay? So we multiply these two together and, multiply, and, and add it to the reciprocal of this one. And we find that one over X at some T is equal to, 3.92, whoops, 3.92 per molar. All right, so you take one over this one, and then you take these two and multiply them together, and then you add those two things together, and you get 3.92. You now need to take the reciprocal of this. So you want to take one over 3.92, and you find that the concentration of X at some time is equal to 0 0.255 
molar. All right, so it's going to be 0 0.255 molar after the uh, 295 seconds. So it's important to note that the integrated rate law, in this case the second order one, allows us to find the concentration of things after a certain amount of time. Okay, or if we know the concentration change, we can find out how much time went by. Um, any of the things can be the variable. So now if we look here, it says what is the concentration of U after 295 seconds? And if we look up to the beginning, we find that X gas yields U gas, and they're one-to-one. -one. So I'm just copying this down over here as so we can see it. So this is one-to-one. -one. Said another way, for every x we lost, we gained a u. So if we had 0 0.350 molar x to begin with, and now we have 0 0.255 molar, the difference between those two things is 0 0.095 molar, which means that we lost 0.095 molar x and we gained 0.059 molar u. So the concentration of u after um, 295 seconds, the exact same amount of time, is going to be 0.095 molar.